to that rugby podcast hosted by the sports. Hello, hello. Lukey Husey on deck again today to run you through, I guess, the the pool stages that we've just witnessed, yeah, and then jump into a bit of a quarterfinal prediction. Um, mm-hmm. Since our predictions for the pool stages were quite horrible in the end, um, especially myself. But hey, hey, here we are. Yeah. Um, let's start. Wallaby's officially out, let's be honest. Yeah. It is, it's officially uh, look, happened, it's, even though Portugal uh, it, got the win. It, it, no, it was thrilling. It was a th- actually a thrilling game to watch. Portugal have really stepped up this World Cup, have really stepped up. For, for a side that is mostly amateur players, like they were, they'd taken it to these teams. First World Cup win, first, um, you know, I guess, well, obviously first time they've not finished last in the pool. Um they yeah, for there, there's only a couple of teams that you could handpick that you go have had an embarrassing tournament, and they're definitely not one of them. I think both mm-hmm. Paul and C and D. There's not a team that you'd go into. The, even Chile showed off what they, they've got some talent there. Um, Paul C and D. As much as they were shit fights, they well, impressive. You want to know something interesting about Paul C? Portugal's not the bottom. No, I know. That's what Georgia I say. is Georgia, the bottom which of is the crazy. team. To think, That's and even nuts. Georgia, I don't think would be disappointed with their World Cup. Like I think they yeah. would have expected more, but you can look back at the the way Georgia played against many of the teams. Fiji probably should have been in Fiji. Yeah, um, yeah. Other than their game, probably against Australia is the only game they'll look and go, "Damn, that was a our bad performance." But yeah, I, I yeah. sit there and I go, "There's a lot that we can go through." Where you go at the at the end of the day as well, you look at the up. you look at that pool C. Wales topped it, and they were the best team in the pool. By I think after this last game by Fiji, you could say by a step. I think Fiji is going to be actually really disappointed with this last game. Really disappointed. They let themselves down a lot in this totally. last game. But I, I think um, it's, it's one of those wake up calls that they probably needed as well. Like it's yeah. tough. Like it's what I'm starting to think and starting to realize is this is a big tournament, a long tournament. Yeah. You, you know, you think about look back to that game, first game against Wales, and how much that would have taken out of those Fijian players. And then you go again with the game against Australia. And yeah, yeah. It's just especially that poll, it seems like it's been game after game has just been so f- intense that yeah. y- you're bound to, to, to get games like this. So yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, Fiji go through in the second spot, 11 points, the same amount of points as Australia, same win loss. But of course, they get the head to head over Australia and their points differential, they have positive five, whereas Australia is negative one. Uh, so Jesus. quite a, quite a tight grouping there as well. Um, yeah, overall we said that Pool C was going to be um, you know a ball of knives, and that's what it ended up being is a ball of knives. Everyone getting stabbed, um, and yeah, Portugal winning a game and not being bottom of the pool. And in fact, Portugal not losing four games and only losing two games is pretty incredible pretty in that pool. Yeah. Uh, then we go, I mean, we're, we're sort of working. We're, we're going to get to the pool A and pool B in a bit because I think that's where a lot of our discussion is going to happen. But let's look at pool D. Now, England were very lucky to get away against Samoa. We're very lucky to the oh, point yeah. where people are suggesting it's not luck, where it has <laughs> been a, 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 a call made, maybe not necessarily um, with intent, but with just sort of a... Uh, subconscious bias against these tier two nations. I think Samoa's coach himself, in fact, suggested that. So, I, look, Samoa they had a, they had a good tournament with some close games, and I think they are going to be bitterly disappointed not to have gotten this win over England, which I think you know honestly they seem to to deserve that win. They, I definitely think they deserve the win. I'm again, I'm against this conspiracy theory because if we're going to throw that out there, then. I don't know what where you rank Portugal and Georgia versus Fiji. Like, mm. I imagine you'd still call them tier two. Maybe even I don't even know if there's a tier three. But if there's a tier three, they they might be uh, sl- below Fiji. Yeah, they might be slower. But they had Georgia specifically had some pretty bad calls against them yeah. when they were playing Fiji. And I look back and I go, it happens. It's going to happen game to game. Like we looked against Wales. I don't think it's a, as you said, I don't think it's ever intentional. There may be a slight mm. subconscious bias. I'm not going to sit here and say that there isn't, but the, the, to be honest, Samoa had the chance to win that game and lost it mm. as well. Like, I, I, I sat there in an English rugby club charhooing my head off as every time Samoa got, the, got a chance to win the game. And I was I was bitterly disappointed, obviously, for the loss, but I think 
what it shows is just the growth. I I sit here and I still question. I all respects to Christian Lee Leofano, great player. Yeah. How Lee mm. Sopawonga didn't start every game. I don't know if he was injured, and again, I haven't been following it enough with Samoa and what they've been doing. Um, but Lee Sopawonga is on another planet when he plays a game, and mm. uh, he just is absolutely killing it. Yeah, uh, I think as well, this pool, I mean, it sort of ended up probably the way we were sort of expecting it to go, the way you could reasonably expect it to go with England coming out on top, Argentina in second. I think a lot of people might have expected Argentina to come out on top of this pool. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, their game against England uh, at the start was, I mean, that, that decided the pool there and then basically that was the game of the pool. Um, and that, you know, obviously the drop goal game <laughs> or the drop goals game um, and England just, they, 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 you got to give them credit. They they found a way to to get through this pool stage, and they now stand a very good chance of playing semi final footy. You know they're up against Fiji, who are coming off a, coming off a loss to Portugal of all teams, yep. right? So England's going to be going into this one feeling pretty confident about getting into a semi final, uh, and then uh, we're sticking within pool C and D. Um, and the the first quarter final, the other quarter final. There we've got Wales versus Argentina, which is really a matchup of Wales, who's overperformed compared to expectations, and Argentina, who's probably slightly underperformed. However, Argentina is still a good enough team that they can make a semi from this. Like Wales is not uh, such a good team that it's going to uh, that they're going to be impossible to surmount by Argentina. Argentina's got the skill. Uh, they've got the coach who's been there, done that. Uh, so I, I think if I had to pick a favourite for this game, I would probably pick Argentina. It's crazy, yeah. Like, uh, Argentina, I don't think it put a, uh, a perfect performance together at all during mm. this World Cup. Like, even watching the game against Japan back, I went, something just doesn't seem right with Argentina. Like, mm. I went in there with a lot higher expectations of what they were going to deliver. Saying that, they're still, like you said, capable of beating Wales. I don't doubt that at all. I mm. think that's a that is a coin flop that it's just it's it's remarkable to see what Wales and England have achieved at this rugby world cup already. Yeah. From where they were when they started this World Cup. We had like I had Wales and England I think going out um mm. in the pool stages. I England losing to Fiji before the World Cup. I just didn't I saw what I saw against the Samoa was the England I expected to see the whole tournament and that's not the England that have turned up now saying that I think there's a big reason. I think Owen Farrell doesn't fit into this English setup. And I go, you've got as classy player, world class player, mm-hmm. whatever is happening there with their style of play when he's in there, it's not working. George Ford showed you the way against Argentina, how you can beat an Argentina with a man down for, for 77 minutes and deliver a performance like that and win the game that's the way I'd be playing. And if I was Borthwick, I'd be like, look, whatever happens, happens. George Ford showing us the way to win. If it's drop goals, it's drop goals, and we'll do it that way. He just needs to get through. So it'll be yeah. really interesting. If if they put out Farrell again, which I imagine they will, um, then they put up another subpar performance but get through into the semi-finals, it'll be really interesting then where Borfoot goes because, yeah, look, they st- I still don't think, other than the Argentina game, I don't think England's put together, uh, like, the game against Samoa wasn't great. I know they beat Chile quite well, um, and I think that was when Henry Ardrill, whatever his name is, scored five tries. Um, but mm. I just, yeah, to me, the English, I, I look at George Ford and they go, that's that, your, that first game is your key to win. Yep. this World Cup, and if you don't keep going down that route, I'm, I don't know why. All right, we spent a lot of time on Pool C and Pool D, but now we need to look at Pool A and Pool B, where I think the smart money would say the winner of the World Cup is coming out of one of these two pools. Yeah. So in Pool A, France took out top spot with New Zealand coming in second after that uh, for clinical first game. Uh, big news out of the French camp, though, of course, was Antoine Dupont getting his face face broken, but he's wearing some kind of superhero mask <laughs> now to be able to play. Um, and then in Pool B, Ireland took out the top spot after their thrilling win against South Africa. 
Um, and uh, South Africa came in second. Scotland had a chance. We talked about it in the last podcast. They had this little bit of a chance to make it through into the um, quarterfinals, but Ireland put to bed any hope of that with a convincing win there. So this sets up now. I mean, look, well, do, do you want to talk about the pool stages from these two any that much? Because I feel like the more interesting thing is going to, is definitely going to be these quarterfinals coming up. I, there's a couple of things I just want to touch on. Um, firstly, Italy have to be bitterly disappointed with mm-hmm. the Rugby World Cup. Didn't even show up at all. Um, yeah. Get beaten the way they did against New Zealand, I think, just broke them. And they never stood a chance when they came up against France, which was yeah. the game that was going to decide if they made a, a, a semi-final, a quarter-final or not. Mm. Um, same can be said for Scotland. I think Scotland went into this tournament as no, as, as tough it was going to be, the two losses they had, they just were never in the games. And to yeah. lose that way, I think they'll be bitterly disappointed. So I look at those two teams and I go, bad World Cups from everyone else in the pools. Like Namibia, I don't think, put in much of a show. And again, we, we, we talked about this previously where I go, South Africa, something needs to happen there. Namibia's been to enough World Cups to not keep, keep getting continuously pumped 70 mm. Um And then I think Romania in the same boat. It was... They've qualified, and I know they would let go of their coach uh, just the start of this year or end of last year, and it just never never got off the ground. Hardest pool they were playing in. They showed some fight against Tonga, which was good to see. Um, and then, yeah, Tonga didn't really stand a chance. So the teams that are out, understandable, but very disappointed for those two specifically. Mm. But let's move on to those top four teams and talking about the quarterfinals. Yeah, and I just want to circle now, talks about um, uh, talks about Uruguay, and maybe talks about these Tier 2 nations because uh, – we need to. Do, I, I want to have a bit of a discussion after we finish talking about this World Cup stuff about these tier two nations. Some ideas have been floating on around the line, and some ideas of of my own. Uh, but let's look at these quarterfinals. So we've got two cracking quarterfinals, right? So the first one we've got is Ireland up against New Zealand, right? Um, now, obviously, we all know what happened last time. Ireland went to New Zealand, won the series over there, right? Um, and Ireland undefeated throughout this uh, knockout. I don't think they've – have they lost a game this year? No, they've won I, like 16 or so straight. So. Yeah. They're, they're on a hell of a run of form. They are um, favourites at the moment. Number one in the world. Everything is – everything is going Ireland's way until they have to meet New Zealand in the quarterfinals of a Rugby World Cup, right? Uh it's. I think if you were Ireland, you would have much rather faced France here. Oh, I think you would have much rather faced France here because you've already beaten Fr- France this year. I mean, you beat Ireland, uh, beat New Zealand last year, but that's last year, right? This year's a different year. World Cup is different to uh, a tour, right? Yep. France, familiar opponent, play them every year. You know what you're going to get, this familiarity there. New Zealand, something, it, it, they're much like South Africa, something... New Zealand take it to another level in, in World Cups, uh, so this is going to be an, an incredible game to watch. I think I will get up for this game because it's only six a.m. my time that day. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to um, get up and watch this one and and as watch as much of it as I can uh, because I think this is just going to be an incredible game. I think this is going to be uh, it, it'll it, it could go much the same way as France versus New Zealand at the start of this tournament, right, uh, where Ireland uh, – we're, we're really – I guess in that one, uh, New Zealand made a, a, a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes and France were able to exploit them. Ireland can do the same. Ireland can play the same style of footy. Um, or if New Zealand have recaptured some of their magic um, that they usually have, um, and yeah, I guess you look at the, the game over Italy to think, okay, look, you know, Italy's not – France, but they're playing the same competition, um, and you know, you, you feel like to put 96 points on a team that plays in a Six Nations tournament is a pretty good feeling. Uh, so I think New Zealand are probably feeling pretty confident after that. I mean, they put more points in Italy than they did on Uruguay. Yeah. Sure, Uruguay didn't score, score, but you put more on Italy than you did Uruguay, uh, and you put more on Italy than France put on Italy. So you look at these dimensions. For me, I I can't. The, it's hard to bet against New Zealand here, right? It's so hard to bet against New Zealand. But at the same time, Ireland, the, the, this could be the – everything seems to be lining up for Ireland right now. I think if they had – I think if they had literally 
any other opponent that's remaining in the in this tournament, I would be confident of an Irish victory. At the moment, I am uh, I'm like a dog between a ball and a car. I can't decide which one to chase after. You know, like I can't decide which way I want to go. Yeah. Um, and it that's why I've got to watch this game. It's going to be fantastic to watch as a neutral observer. Yeah, look, I I think. Ireland have got themselves into a position which is a really good position but it can also be really bad and I think playing the All Blacks like you said I don't think they'll be so much worried about the opponent I think they they know they can beat us Um, but I think what I see could potentially happen is a very England semi-final from last World Cup where Ireland to them just about this is their final to beat the New Zealand and Rugby World Cup when you haven't made it past the quarters yet so if they win this game what happens next for Ireland? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a big talking point because I think this will be to them as a as a as a final, and yeah. so if they do get the win, I, I struggle to see them going all the way purely just because I think this game they use all their energy. Yeah. Well, you say that if they win, they play either Wales or Argentina. Which yes, like again, whoever a- wins this, you. Put them in as favourites to get all the way through to the final, but exactly that final. Yeah, yeah, that that yeah. That, again, like I could see that if they win this, they for me they make the final. I so, don't, I I cannot see Wales or Argentina. I, yeah, with the winner of this game and the winner of the other uh, pool A pool, pool B quarterfinal, you just say you win this game, you're in the World Cup final just about. Yeah. Um, you go in as heavy uh, favourites into the semi final, which is hundred percent very rare in a regular World Cup. Yeah. But I would say, yeah, I, look, I'm. I'm very optimistic about how we're going now, like as all black fan, um, on the side of the podcast. I sit there and I watched Italy and I watched Uruguay and I sat there and I said, Yeah, we're we we're, we're, we're starting to flow again, I think. It was big. What was clear to me in that France game that we missed was a Shannon Frizzell at number six, Brody Retallick not starting at lock. All those things. Look, there's gonna be some selection headaches and as soon as the team drops, I know there'll be a lot going around. Does Sam Kane start? Do you keep him on the bench? Who starts at fullback? D Mac or, or Bodie? Um, your centre pairing, everything like that will be a lot to be talked about. But I'm confident. I am as confident as I'll ever be to what team we put out there can beat Ireland. Um, and like you said, I think if you beat Ireland here or Ireland beat us, you, you pencil them into a final. So, And that's... That's a little bit disrespectful to those two other teams, but it's just based on what we've seen previously, and we all know yeah. a red what card in the first tournament. or second minute that yeah. can change a game. Um, but I just, yeah. yeah, I would say you, you're definitely looking at one of those two teams being in the final. Whoever wins this game, which is which yeah. makes it just as big, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, uh, hypothetical that I think I know the answer to, and I think every New Zealand fan would answer probably the same. Would you rather face Ireland or New- or South Africa in this quarterfinal? Uh, oh, good question. Um, I know. Here's here's the thing. This is. Uh, I would rather face Ireland. Yeah. But I know, like, and we'll talk about it probably when we talk about France, France versus South Africa quarter. I think New Zealand the only team that can knock South Africa out of this Rugby World Cup. And I've said that, and I'll say that until the day I die. That I don't mm. see South Africa losing again at this World Cup unless. They play the All Blacks. I see the only team yeah. that can beat us. And so, in essence, I kind of wish we were playing South Africa so we'd knock them out here and then it would be a different final. Than a you wouldn't South have African to play them final. in the final. Because that's, yeah. that's where my nervous... I think any other... You say a quarter final, you say a semi-final against South Africa, New Zealand wins. When you get to a final... Final, that's... It makes me South Africa turn... South Africa yeah. turn into the, the demon demigods that they are. And, yeah, um, yeah look, so I... I I, I'm happy to be playing Ireland, but I know in a quarter final or a semi final we would beat South Africa. I don't have yeah, final finals are different. Be South Africa, like yeah. I don't. I, I mean, I'm just trying to think now. I don't think we have lost to South Africa at a World Cup other than a final, 1995 final. I would imagine. I'm just thinking back 99. We didn't lose to them. I think we lost to you guys in the semis 2003. Maybe we did. Who won 2003? Let me, let me okay. Let's they have a look. So. Yeah. So, 1999 Rugby World Cup. Okay. Uh, and then let's go 2003 World Cup. 2007, 2007 we definitely, World... definitely didn't because we lost to France in the quarters. 2011, we won it. 2015, we won it. 2019, we lost to England. And... 2003 Rugby World Cup. 
knockout stage. Let's get to that. Uh, you beat South Africa in the quarters there yep. and then lost to Australia in the semis. semis. 1999 World Cup, uh, you didn't play South Africa. There yep. you lost to France in the semifinals. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And 95, when we played them in the final, famous food poisoning game, but we won't get too deep into that. But um, that's the only time they've beaten us at a Rugby World Cup because even 2019, we played in the pool stages. Mm. Lost to the, uh, They lost to us in the pools, but then obviously we lost to England and they beat England. So, yeah, look, that's why I'm so confident against South Africa, except for when it comes to a final because mm. I think that's where South Africa do stand up. Talking about South Africa, should we talk about South Africa versus France now? Yes. Antoine Dupont, obviously we mentioned you mentioned earlier, playing face mask on. Does he play this game? There's been talks. I think career-defining game for him, career-defining game for France, my belief is he's going to get a couple of painkillers or whatever he can do, and he'll be out. Cortisol there. injections, yeah. yeah. He'll they, they'll do whatever they need to for him to play. Uh, and, yeah, I, I, it's all the news reports sound extremely positive um, and like he's trending towards playing. I can't, you know, yeah, I, I, I would be shocked if he didn't play. I would be yeah. honestly shocked if he didn't play. Um, yeah, I, I feel like again France they they would probably rather um, they would probably rather play Ireland in in this rather than South Africa. You know, yeah, I think they'll be nervous. Like South yeah. Africa, I think match up better against France than they do against Ireland. I think South yeah. Africa's strengths obviously in that four massive four pack that they've got, and I think that's where France uh, able to be attacked. Um, I think the the class of the backs and the French, against, especially against us, came out and showed it. And it's not like the All Blacks don't have some classy backs because we do, but that's the, that's the fact. So I think South African are just going to absolutely maul them. However, saying that, it's not many times I'm rooting for France, but I you may actually find me rooting for France here. Um, yeah. And then I guess the winner goes on to play England or Fiji. Which yeah, again, again you, you take them you take them as heavy favourites as heavy against favorites either, going of, those to either of those two teams. So look, I mean it's yeah, these quarterfinals it's spicy to say the least. It's spicy. But I guess I mean when you come to the semi finals, if one of these teams manages to pull off an upset, it just makes it even better. Could you like, imagine, imagine a Fiji final? Like, yeah, I was yeah, Fiji, Argentina, like yeah. you know, anyone like that. Wales, yeah. even I'd love well, basically any of those teams by England. You did like to see, really, hundred <laughs> percent anyone by England. Um, yeah, yeah. Gosh, that would be it. Would be interesting because you got to think about it. Like I've just said with Ireland, this is their final. Realistically, yeah. this quarter final for these four teams. Two of them are going home. Two of the top four teams are going home at this World Cup at the quarter final stage. When yep. I look back, and that's what the the writing's not going to be there. The writing, when you look back in history and we Wikipedia and we go in 2040 and go, oh, what happened at the 2023 Rugby World Cup? It'll be New Zealand got knocked out in the quarters. Ireland got knocked out in the quarters. You know, like it's not going to be, oh, these were the four best teams. It's just going to show you as a quarter yeah. final loss. So this is their final and what mm -hmm. it takes out of them. is going to be big. It's going to be massive. Like four of the top four teams. But, but what it takes out of them, they're lucky in a way in that their semi final is an easier game. You then have you almost have a week of recovery, you know what I mean? Like you're not thrust right into like if this was their yeah. semi final, you know, yeah, then you I'd be a bit like okay, then their final they still. But the say, fact that they have then a game after that, you know, like I am glad we've finished on the side of the draw now that we've finished on to be playing either Argentina or Wales. I wouldn't like to be playing England if England get past Fiji. Like that's that's not a that English side knows how to. Play big moments. They know how to win. Yeah. I say South Africa or France get through that game to go up against England rather than going up even against Wales, who yeah. is, they are playing with their hearts on their sleeves at the moment. I, I still, um, in disbelief, they've got it this far from where they were previous to this to the World Cup starting. They're yeah. defensively a I'm, whole lot better, but I just go yeah. even that or Argentina. I go New Zealand. I know can beat those two teams. Yeah, well, hundred percent. I mean, you've got to give credit us. to England though for it, for yeah. making it this far. Yeah. All right, mate. Shall we predict? Lock in our predictions. Yep. 
do you want to start? Yeah, absolutely. So you want me to just run through all four or go a game at a time? Run for all four. Give us your four and then I'll give you my four. Game one, Wales versus Argentina. I have Argentina going through. I just... Wales, their one good game was against a collapsing Australia side, really. Other than that, they had a close game against Portugal, close game uh, against Fiji, and I'm pretty sure their game against Georgia was close as well. Like, I just haven't seen enough out of the Welsh, and I think the Argentinians can do enough to take that one. Ireland versus New Zealand. Ireland don't make it past quarterfinals. I can't go against my Anzac brethren. I have to go New Zealand for this one. I just, I, I, it would be unimaginable for me to see New Zealand go out in the quarters. I just, I can't, I physically cannot imagine it. Uh, England versus Fiji. England, again, I think Fiji, like Wales, I think Pool C was a violent pool, um, but it was an unskilled pool. And I think Fiji are probably counting themselves lucky to be here right now. They, after losing to Portugal, they are lucky to be here. Um, and I think this English side is too classy. Um, they've shown that they can match up with the physical uh, Islander nations, um, I, and they, they've got the World Cup experience. Uh, so I'm picking England. France versus South Africa. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. What a game. I'm picking South Africa for this one because I think South Africa is going to go with a 7-1 bench split and run props into Antoine Dupont's face all day long. I think they are going to make the little Frenchman's life hell on the field, and he's not going to have the impact that he would uh, have otherwise. Um, and just simply from being in pain from them, and it's not, it won't be a dirty tactic or anything. It'll just be like, you've chosen to be on this field. You, we're going to make you earn your right to be on this field. Uh, you're going to have to beat us, and we're going to beat you until you beat us. Uh, so I'm picking South Africa in this because they can play bully ball like no one else. So to so my semifinals would then be Argentina versus New Zealand, England versus South Africa. Nice. Yeah, look, it's tough. It really is. Um, but to start off with game one, Wales versus Argentina, I've gone Wales. I've been impressed with their defensive record and what Argentina has shown me, even in that last game against Japan, is that they will concede points. And I think what happens here is Wales tackle their hearts out and just tick the scoreboard over and find a way to win this game. So, yeah, I think Wales yeah. do enough. Like, I don't think it's going to be another... Yeah. It's going to be a Welsh perform a Welsh 2023 yeah. Rugby World Cup. It's going to be a close game either yeah. either way. I don't see it being a blowout either way. If I if it's if it will be a blowout, if I had to pick a blowout, I'd actually pick a Welsh blowout rather than yeah. Argentinian blowout. But I think for me, Argentina, I think can do enough to get over the line. Oh, totally. And I, it's 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 close. It's one of those ones where you it's, it could go either way. Yeah, we we're, we're, we're flipping a coin really here. Um, on to the second game, New Zealand versus Ireland. As a All Blacks fan. You know I'm going to be picking the All Blacks here. Um, it is one of those games like this is do or die for Ireland. Like this is their golden generation. Johnny Sexton never made it past the quarterfinals. Can they finally mm. do it? We'll see. Um, look, I think it's probably arguably as a um, bias All Blacks fan, I think these are the two best teams in the world at the moment. I know South Africa is always up there, but I think we beat South Africa in our day. Um but I think whoever wins this game has a very good chance to go all the way through to the Rugby World Cup and sign off as winners. Uh, game three, England, Fiji. I, I, I want to pick Fiji. I really do. I just think, look, I think if Can't. Fiji learnt more probably from that England game against Samoa about how they're going to beat them, but mm. the way yeah, Fiji's kind of declined in play, like their game against Georgia wasn't good, then they had this loss against Portugal. If it was Fiji at the start of the tournament, I would be going, yeah, Fiji to beat England, um, but I just can't after the after the past two performances. I'm I'm going to be rooting for them. I ball, hope that they will. Ball but. security has been awful from Fiji against Australia. Their ball security was on point, and like yeah. I said in our podcast we did after that, they choked the life out of Australia by holding onto the ball and having such a huge rate of possession against Portugal. Every third carry was a, a knock on or a penalty conceded. Just horrific ball security. Yeah, and you could say the same against the Wales game again and versus the Georgia game. Like, what Fiji team is going to turn up? Is it going to be the start of the, the tournament, Fiji, who were hot on fire, carrying the ball hard, like like you yeah. see, suffocating teams? Or is it going to be this team that is going to drop the ball every three phases, not have any continuity, and just hope that 
Frank Lamani or um, can kick them through to a, a World Cup semi. So if the right Fiji team turn up, they can definitely beat England. But I just I don't want to bank on the right Fiji turning up. I'd rather bank yeah. on my prediction that England just hold on. I don't think they're going to win convincingly, but I think they do enough, um, depending on what team they select as well. If they go George Ford, I think they they run right and just go yeah. um, with no one Farrell. I would go Ford to Alangi, um, and then you can select either Merchant or Lawrence as the outside centre. Um, but I, they won't do that. Um, and the final game, France versus South Africa. Look, it's tough. This one is by far the toughest one, I think, to predict. I think, like I'm saying that because I'm biased All Blacks fan and I'm going to pick the All Blacks, but as a complete neutral, this one, I think, is the toughest one to predict. The France that played the All Blacks, that was just so classy, that victory. And then I look at the South Africans the last time they played the All Blacks when they beat us and just suffocated us of, of life of rugby, 35-7, to 7, I think it was in the end. One of the biggest, all, the biggest All Blacks defeat. Um, and I go, those two teams coming together, the way even the, the Springboks just lost to Ireland, I, I sit there and I go, this is so hard to pick. I think the Springboks do it. I am so unconfident in that. I think if we had a healthy Antoine Dupont, maybe my opinion might change slightly. Um, but I think, like what you said, I think South Africa know how to get the job done and they're going to know... Yeah. What strings to pull against Dupont? They're going to have Faf de Klerk sitting there playing around with the mask as he's trying to put a ball in. You know, it's going to just, just gonna punch be... him in the face like he did to Nick White last year. Exactly, crack, yeah, crack just him. a swinging arm and and yeah. away we go. So look, I want to be proven wrong. Yeah, with South Africa getting knocked out of this tournament, but I also hate the French. So I'm like, uh, like it's the it's really tough. Like there's only yeah. really for me, there's the Wales, Argentina, Fiji. I'm happy to support them. Everyone else, mm. even the Irish, like I said, they've become too good that I can no longer support them. And like, oh, this is a feel-good story. Oh, no. You've been number one now for the whole year. If you blow it now, like this is the expectations that the All Blacks always go in with. It's Rugby World yeah. Cups that they've now got it upon them and they've got to deliver. Can they deliver? I don't That's the so. question. I don't think so. So, well, I mean, interest it is. <laughs> I know, these quarterfinals, it's the draw. The way the draw was set up was madness. But now we're here. I'm just, it's going to be so interesting. Like you said, the yeah, what we what the players do this week, and then how they try and back it up next week in a in a semi final where you know you've just played one of the best four teams in the exactly. world. Exactly. So that's that's the other thing as well. Like we're talking, we're, we're penciling in the winner of these two quarterfinals going straight to the final. But imagine how much they they are going to give in these games. Like you could. England is one of those teams that could absolutely pounce on a weakened South Africa, a weakened France mm-hmm. after they get a relatively easy win over Fiji. You know, Wales, as you said, very defensively, they could choke the life out of a New Zealand if New Zealand expends all its energy against Ireland, that type of thing. You know, like it's it, it's not an automatic pencil. It's, it's heavy favorites, but it's heavy favorites. Uh, but with with the high likelihood of a trap game as well, like it's just it, it's it's entertaining rugby. We're gonna have some entertaining rugby that's coming up. That's for sure. Totally, and th- and I guess that's what we could make of this. Really, is as much as the draw I think was done way too early. We have got to the point where a team can win a rugby world cup who we wouldn't have given much much odds at the start of this Rugby World mm-hmm. Cup, a team like Wales, a team like Argentina. And someone said, I can't even remember who it was, I think it was um, Matt Burke when I was listening to, to that, that podcast, was you only need to put three good games together in a Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Now they're at this stage, one team just has to put three, not even good games, just three winning games together. Yeah. It's all you need. So you to win three games, that's it. So you win three games and you've you've got a rugby, you're lifting a rugby world cup. Now yeah. I'm saying it, that if, I, if you're in Ireland winning sixteen in a row doesn't mean much if you can't win the next three. Next three, exactly. And I sit there and I go, I honestly believe that all eight teams maybe and, and the only reason I'm taking this team out, maybe bar Fiji, purely because of the Portugal loss, like the past mm. two weeks. If we get if it was Fiji from the start of the tournament, say they kept that rolling. I would have said all eight teams can win three games. Like I look and I go, Wales can beat Argentina. Say Wales, say Ireland beat New Zealand. Wales can beat Ireland. They've done that before. Wales can beat Ireland. Say then they go on to play France or South Africa. Wales beat South Africa in South Africa last year. Like it's not like it's mm-hmm. 
this crazy thing. So all eight teams, bar probably Fiji, I think, can win three, these three games on their day. So it's what you want in a rugby world cup, is it not? Exactly. It is what you want. Um, I guess the other thing you want is for games to be more even, some parity in the pool stages, which we didn't get that much of, other than probably pool C, really, and a bit of pool D, right? Um, but we didn't really get that much parity at this World Cup. But what we've seen is that some of these Tier 2 nations are developing, right? That are getting are making some progress, you know, like an Uruguay, uh, like your Fiji is the, the most clear example, Samoa as well, uh, Japan. Um, but there's still some minnows out there. Now, there's talk of expanding the next Rugby World Cup to 24 teams, um, which I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to. Um, you know, I think it's a good thing. And I think actually it's quite weird, but I think rugby is growing in Europe. Now, you'll have a better idea of this since you're over there now. But it's, you know, the, the showing that we got from Portugal shows that there is life in Portugal for rugby, right? The Netherlands apparently is mad on rugby. Huge amount of Dutch fans at all of these Rugby World Cup games is what I've been hearing and seeing on social media. So the development of the game in the Netherlands would be uh, an incredible thing. And I think even... Um, uh, You've talked in the past when we played rugby there about people going on contract to the Netherlands to play rugby there because people are so into it. I know they're hugely into American football there. I know some people that have gone and played on contract in the Netherlands for American football. So clearly they like their contact sport as well. And can you imagine, you know, the Netherlands is got the tallest average height um, in the world, right? So you can imagine some of these huge Dutch giants like uh, in a line-out and things like that. So, um, and I mean, that's that's where the South Africans, the Boer descendants are mm-hmm. from, is from the Netherlands originally. You know, your de Klerks and things like that. Um, yeah, they come originally from uh, the Netherlands way, way back. So I, you, you could see there that if the South Africans are into it, it's it's literally within the DNA of the Dutch to to enjoy it as well. Um, you know, and you could develop your teams like your Georges, your Romanias as well, um, and get some more uh, European involvement. So I, there's, I think some more, an expanded tournament in Europe, a uh, second tier to the six nations, if you will, you have your six nations, tier one, six nations, tier two, with the opportunity to relegate, which, which we talked about last podcast, where you have your six nations, tier one, six nations, tier two, Lose, you know, bottom team in tier one plays the top team in tier two for a relegation battle. Amazing. How how good would that be? You develop your, you, that way you get your teams like Portugal playing more games because they don't play enough rugby. They don't play enough as a national team to 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 really be competing. But we've seen in this World Cup they won a game. They won against Fiji. Players who are playing in France in the best league in the world lost to Portugal, an amateur team, basically. Uh, and you look at uh, teams like Romania who are consistently in World Cups but aren't getting the results, but just need more opportunities. They just need more playing time. Um, and I think, uh, you know, bringing some more countries on board like your um, like your Netherlands, I think would be a really great opportunity. And imagine if you could make some inroads into Germany, Spain, some other traditional soccer uh, powerhouses. I mean, we're already seeing the growth of the game in Italy and France to huge and and England, obviously the home of rugby, like, you know, the, the possibility is endless. And I think world rugby needs to, um, needs to take the focus away from the tier one nations a little bit and start looking at the tier two and expanding the game. Because if you only have the same tier one nations throughout your entire history, you're not going to, you're not going to survive. Like the best stories that like soccer world cups are when like the lower tier nations, beat the higher tier nations and you see the development of the lower tier nations. Like some of the most exciting storylines in this last soccer world cup was the development of the U S because everyone knows that there's talent there and that, that sooner or later, they're going to be a major player in the, in the world scene at the women's world cup. We had the, um, we had the Australian women's team make it obviously so far. Uh, there's the, you know, the, the run that the Matildas had was just incredible. So I think that focus on tier two nations should really be, in world rugby's eye ahead of the next world cup. We should be looking at developing the Pacific nations more. We should be looking at developing Europe more. We should be looking at developing America more because this is the other side of the tier two nations. You know, you have something, you call it like the Pacific champions cup. You get the USA, Canada, uh, Chile, 
Uruguay, uh, and Tonga Sama. We get a lot of these Pacific nations that aren't uh, playing super rugby or something like that, or aren't going to be involved in like the rugby championship. And you make a tournament of that. Like you get TV rights, you get more money. People are playing more. Like there's the opportunity to do that, to build and grow the game. Why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. I can't agree enough with, with a lot of what you've said. Um, I know that there is currently a second light div, not six nations, but they have a second div rugby tournament uh, each year, mm. which Georgia normally wins. Um, but Portugal actually, I think, normally makes the final with them. Um, saying that, I know, I don't know if it was Portugal, it may have, I think it was Portugal or it might have been Romania. So Spain actually were qualified into this Rugby mm. World Cup and then got kicked out because they played an ineligible player. Um, and I think Portugal took their place. And you can see now, like, how great it mm. is for the Portuguese. But I sit there and I go, they should just simplify that. Exactly what you've said is you go Six Nations, and you go Six Nations B, Six Nations C, Six Nations D, until you have all the Six Nations there, and every single one has a chance of promotion relegation. And I would say, rather than just saying the loser gets relegated and the winner gets yeah. promoted, I'd say there's a game. There's a playoff game. Like you've, yes. yeah, I suggest, that's, that's, that's what I suggested, suggested yeah, 100%. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, that, I just, that's why I I just, just because, think, because that is important because it gives that Tier 2 nation a chance of playing a Tier 1 nation, yeah. right? And that way that there's that opportunity for the learning there from that Tier 2 nation, um, even if they don't get through. Um, and it also is – it does prevent a little bit of like a mismatch. You know, just because you come bottom of Six Nations one year, you shouldn't be forced to play in Tier 2 then. You, you should have a chance to show that we're still better than these Tier 2 teams. And I, I also think it's an opportunity for a sellout game. Imagine Italy first. Yeah bottom of tier one um, and host Georgia, your chances are you're getting just about a sellout crowd from the Italians who do not want to go down to the Georgians yeah. who want to go up, like just the atmosphere. Or Italy games. versus Portugal, like Portugal's close to Italy, you know, exactly. that, that, and two very passionate fan bases. And then again, you start to do this and you'll, you'll have uh, Portugal versus Spain more often. I just think simplify it, just make it easy. I'll do the same mm -hmm. with the rugby championship. Now, I know you said that, post that said South Africa to go to Europe, but we need to hold on to South Africa. We need the yeah. South African coin. So but I, I would... think you can, I think you can expand it like that. That suggestion was 100%. more about having the tier one and the tier two. And I'll see if I could find it um, again, uh, just so I can actually look at the image and see it. The, t the teams who were suggested. Well, yeah, because I, would, I, th I would go, if it was me, I would go the, the current four and I'd add Fiji, Japan and make it a six nations rugby championship. Yes, yeah, so the, the post includes Samoa in that. I would, you know, not Samoa in that. They drop down to the tier two, um, and uh, you keep South Africa in there. Yep. And then the tier two, they're suggesting Hong Kong, Tonga, Canada, USA, Chile, and Uruguay. I think you lose Hong Kong Hong, from yeah. that. Um, they're the lowest ranked there, and you put Samoa in there. Yep. Um, and I think that's a very viable tournament. And I think you have the opportunity for promotion and relegation within that as well. Exact same thing yeah. happens. Hey, if you finish last, yep. you've got to play off against, imagine Samoa versus Fiji. This is another mm. one in Fiji, hosted by Fiji, and the game's to stay in the top rugby championship division. How good is that? Just something clear, concise that we know. I know the issue they're going to have with this is they've got this new World League that they've started, which has all these divisions and stuff. So it's like, is this just complicating it too much? Are we adding too much in there? I Again, I'll see how this World League goes for the next, I think they're doing it for starting it next year, but I I still, I still, it makes more sense to me to have the Rugby Championship be six teams, have a second division, and mm. even have a third division there. I think you could probably get three divisions, get Hong Kong, get some of those smaller nations, and just getting more international rugby play. Look, yeah. international is... Rugby is rugby, in my opinion. As mm -hmm. much as like, I love my Hurricanes, I love my Wellington Lions, international rugby is the golden standard of rugby. It's, There's nothing bigger. We, 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 we've said it before. International rugby is the only sport where the international level is the highest level of competition. right? Because yeah. within soccer, football, however you want to call it, the highest level is at the club slash... It, it's, it's at the club level, let's be honest. It's at the club level... Um, where you play within your own premiership and then you have also the UEFA Champions League and stuff, that's the highest, highest level. The international game is on par with it maybe a step below, right? 
it's it's certainly up there, but I wouldn't say that it's the the pinnacle of it. International rugby is the pinnacle of rugby. Simple as that. There, you, there's no competition where you can say there's not even a question of any competition being better than international rugby. Like our biggest competitions, Six Nations Rugby Championship, are international yep. competitions. There's no question about it. And it's it's unique among sports in in that regard. Totally, yeah. And I, I, yeah, I just think, like you said, the more I, playing rugby in the Netherlands, I saw exactly what you said. That just the, the fans are crazy, the people are crazy. They love it. They want to be involved. They're definitely building the right way. It's just going to take time. It's one of those things. I think with all of those European nations, like you said, the more rugby they get, the better they will become. And I, I yeah. think we do expand it to twenty four. I just want the right twenty four teams in there. Um, yeah, which. I guess we'll we'll take place. We'll eventually get down to that, and there'll be some teams that miss out that probably should be in the Rugby World Cup, but haven't had good qualifying games and stuff like that. But yeah, I I'm I'm hope I'm hopeful for where international rugby is going. As much as I loved what was the All Blacks era of era of domination from 2008 mm. to 2018 for ten years, there a decade of domination, we'll call it. I'm excited to know that we're going into this World Cup, and we're not. 100% favourites to win it. Like, there are mm. four good teams that could be all knocked out in the quarterfinals. And as we said, there's probably seven teams that could end up winning this World Cup. Whereas a lot of the times you're just like, can someone beat the All Blacks? And last yeah. year, last time it was England who beat the All Blacks, but then failed to, 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 to lift the main goal. So, look, I'm excited for future of rugby. I can definitely say that. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And I, we just need to fix it here in Australia. We'll, we'll be right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't I'm, think you're as far away. So many people, I think, think that Australian rugby is so far gone. And like you said, the, the actual grassroots of Australian rugby is strong. Like, yeah. very, very strong. It's just about, I think, like, like, and as Australian rugby have already noted, it's that high performance. How mm-hmm. do we get these players playing at a higher performance, coming from that, that grassroots rugby, which they love to play? And, yeah, and we need to stop losing players to league as well. How do we retain talent? So, so how do we develop the talent? How do we retain the talent? And how do we maintain the talent? And you've got to think that you are probably the only country in the world that has a competitor like that. Even when we look mm. at rugby league in the UK, it's not it's not near anywhere well, we've near. We've got two what, competitors. We've got two exactly, competitors because we've got NRL, league and AFL. And, AFL. And, and if you're a budding rugby star, chances are you've been plucked or you've been scouted by one of those other two sports and yeah i just sit there and i go there is not another place i think in the world that has that for international it's uniquely, rugby. yeah yeah it's a uniquely challenging uh environment yeah and and you, about about the, you know what the clo- you know what the closest is actually is uh usa but rugby's not even a competition there it's the it's the nfl that's oh, where totally. they're all all looking yeah yeah and again that's that's there, yeah, that is the closest. Like, I don't think you've got a more even competition than you have with rugby union and rugby league in Australia yeah. for talent wise. Um, and so, yeah, it's yeah something's got to be done. We we can both openly admit that. But I definitely maybe and maybe we'll do this especially when after the rugby World cups was we'll do a full breakdown into Australian rugby, have a look mm-hmm. into it, see what we actually can put ideas to paper and stuff, and go what will we do if we were in charge of Australian rugby. Um, because yep. right now I couldn't give you an answer on how they're going to get out. I think their centralised contracts in Rugby Australia are the way forward. But like the, the, Brumbies, steps. the Brumbies have come out and said, look, we're happy to hand over the keys. We just want to see a proposed plan of what yeah. is actually happening. And I know New South Wales Waratahs have already done it, which is a massive first step for Australian rugby. But yeah, look, I'm I'm intrigued with Australian rugby. There's, there's definitely mm. enough there to, to not make me go, you're going to eventually win the Bledisloe. And the day, as I said, hopefully maybe after I've not on this earth anymore, um, so I don't have to feel the grief, but that would be a very long time. Um, yeah. But eventually it will happen, and eventually Australian rugby, I think, will get back to some glory days. I don't think it's dying, as many people seem to think. Yeah. No, it's 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 very easy to say that from uh, the outside, but I think anyone involved with rugby will see how many people are still keen on it. Totally. Now, I'm just just this last point, I want four things from you. I want team that disappointed you most that is already out. So the team that's disappointed you yep. the most. Team that's impressed you the most that's already out. 
team, that, our player that's impressed you the most, if you have a player, and a player that you think hey, was the biggest letdown in the tournament out of the teams that have been eliminated. So I'll sure. start. I'll start, and then you can uh, have some time because I didn't put this on the run sheet. I just kind of mm. fought it. But the team that I actually think was the most disappointing was Italy. Um, and I think, like, you can look at Australia, you can look at Scotland, and you can go, they should make it through. But an Australian team that showed up, other than the Wales game, they showed up and played some rugby. They didn't. They weren't mm. at the level to get through, but they played some rugby, and they only missed out because of a head-to-head. Like, it's not like they were disastrous. When I look at Italy and I go, 96 points against New Zealand is bad. And then against yeah. France, when you last played them, it was like 40 to 20. And the, before that, you should have beat them to lose by 60-odd points. They just didn't even show up. So Italy, by far, my most disappointing team. My most impressed team who's gone out. You could say Portugal, but I've actually turned my attention. I think Samoa, for the work that they put in, they didn't get the reward out of it. Like mm. the game against Japan, they were close, couldn't pull it off. Game against Argentina, I think they lost like by seven points in just about all those games. I think actually the Argentina one might have been nine. So like they were in all of these games, they just couldn't finish it off, and I was just quite impressed by the way they showed up in a tough pool. Player that has impressed me the most comes from Samoa, Theo McFarland. I mentioned him pre World Cup, but uh, he played lock and then played six against England, and he's just he is a weapon. He's a force mm. to be reckoned with. Plays for Saracens. Um, is a very good player um, and has impressed me a lot. Player that's disappointed me the most is going to be Carter Gordon, unfortunately. Yeah. Not because. And I'm, I'm going to put my hand up and say that's mine as well. As well. There you go. Yeah. It's not so much like I'm disappointed in him. It's just after watching what he did with the Rebels and then even bits and pieces before this World Cup, I expected more from him. And that was more what I, I felt like. To be mm-hmm. at the end, to be overtaken by Ben Donaldson is just not what you can what, can, what what was meant to come out of this World Cup when you were the only fly half selected. Yep, yeah, hundred yeah, um, percent. Yeah, well, so sticking with that, my player is also Carter Gordon. Um, I think he showed flashes in the Rugby Championship of what he was capable of, um, but I think he was probably. I think there wasn't enough contact with the coaches in the system pre all of this, you know, and this is why that centralized and high performance stuff will be so key it's having much more interaction between the national level and your players while they're still playing super rugby level, lower levels, all that kind of thing. Right. Um, team that disappointed me the most. I mean, for an Australian, it's very easy to say Australia did because there are games that we should have won and we just, and we didn't, you know, like the, the Fiji game was, winnable uh the wales game was also winnable although wales always seem to sort of have our number they know how to play against australia but the the fact that we were that it came down to a head-to-head for us not getting through i think is very disappointing it shows that we um you know i think it could have gone very differently if eddie had played his cards for look yes i'm focused on the 2027 world cup but I, I then have four years to worry about that. Let me just play this tournament for the, with the best chance I have at winning this tournament and then start all my stuff next year, you know? Um, and I think that would have been a bit more palatable to Australian fans. I think everything would have been a lot smoother and you might, you, do, you don't risk as, uh, as much public backlash, but you also don't risk as much in terms of harming players' development like a Carter Gordon, throwing them in the fire before they're, not ready. And you know that you're getting this national high performance. You know you're getting centralized contracts. That's coming where you're going to have your hands on these players a lot more. I feel like he was almost – he's he, he's a kid with a with a whole bunch of new toys, and he just couldn't wait to play with them. Um, and he, he lacked Got a bit of patience there. Got pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. So that's, my, so that's my team that's disappointed me. The team that's impressed me the most that has gone out. I mean, it's a tough one. Um, I just can't get past Portugal because they've played <laughs> no rugby and they won a game. They won their first game in their history here. And they drew a and, game. That's crazy. And they drew well. a game, you know, like, and they their results were close as well, right? You know, like it wasn't, they, they didn't get blown out of the water, really. They Like, like they had better performances than Italy did, mm-hmm. who plays six nations, who plays regular 
rugby. Like if we look at some of like they they had really good results for their level as a team. And I look at the other teams who are already out. It's hard to be impressed by teams who are out, you know, yep. because they've obviously tripped and fallen somewhere. J- Japan was my other sort of pick for team that was disappointing me that's already gone out. And I can't really think of another team that that's impressed me at all that's gone out. Player that's impressed me. That, that and it's that that's from a team that's already gone out, right? Player that's impressed me for team. Uh, I don't. I I will say one player that's impressed me and is giving me a little bit of hope is Angus Bell. <laughs> I, think, I was waiting for that. I was like, surely he has to go Angus Bell yeah. here. He had one hell of a he, tournament the, for a team that got knocked did. out. And there's there's some thing like EPA score, which is sort of like a player rating metric, as close as we can get to an American football rating. Angus Bell is the highest rated player at this tournament, I think. Yep. Like. He is a future Wallabies captain. He's a future Waratahs captain. He's a future legend of the game, right? How he's he, he's young as well. He's got more so World Cups left under 22? him. He's 23, 23. 23. He just turned 23 five days ago. There, there you go. go. There you go. Right. Yeah. So, so he's got three more World Cups in him, yeah. right? He's got three more World Cups in him. Uh, Props don't hit their peak until 30, 31, and 32 as well. Exactly. So he's. Yeah, I just for, for me, he had a fantastic World Cup for, as you said, for a team that's gone out, and he gives me hope for Australian rugby. Him, Will Skelton, give me hope for Australian rugby within our within our forwards. Rob Valentini, as well. I think everyone else is probably uh, not safe in their positions and their their positions are up for grabs. But you got Bell, Valentini, Skelton. Are your three that you can build a hell of a four pack around those three, right? Yep. Um, you know, you look at the backs. Corbetti's probably hanging up the international boots after this tournament. After great service to Australia, can't blame him whatsoever. No one can need to say was good, but I felt like he didn't get enough opportunities. I think everyone else in the backs is probably very nervous about what they did. Jordan, again, Jordan Pataj just shouldn't have seen the field as much as he did. It's that's all, and again, that's why Australia is. My is my disappointing team. Like yeah. there's just so there, there's yeah. players had the opportunity to step up. It's like what you said last week about Ben Donaldson and Card Cardigan and all that. They had the opportunity to step up, and for me, some of these players that are w- way more experienced than Donaldson and Carter Gordon didn't didn't perform. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's it just uh, very very disappointing. It's it's hard to. To be a Wallabies fan right now, I'll say that. Yeah, I I couldn't imagine it. Couldn't imagine going out mm. in the full, yeah, full stages. Um, don't have to. So, mm. um, yeah. Look, quarterfinals up this weekend. Yeah. A uh, huge, huge couple of games in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will keep you up to date. So stay tuned with us. Make sure you're subscribed on the YouTube and you've notified mm-hmm. and doing all the right stuff on the podcast apps. Um, but for now, I have been Luke and that has been Husey and this has been That Rugby Podcast brought to you by the Sports Booth. Goodbye. Peace. Peace.